Thank you, Lorraine. Isaiah chapter number 40. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse number 28, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor grows weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and increases the strength of those that have no might. He increases the, even the youth shall faint and be weary. Young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, which everyone in here knows. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen, 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 amen. If you would like to read that with me one more time, we can read it together. We'll read it in unison as I begin right here. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, I just want to take the time, and maybe if you were here eight years ago or seven years ago, you might have heard me preach this message before, but all night long, Michelle, I woke up every so often, maybe five times, and I woke up with this message and this scripture on my mind. And I thought, well, I have other things I could preach, but man, this just got down in my soul. And I want to just preach to you today uh, a sermon, if I had to give it a title, The Lessons of an Eagle. The Lessons of an Eagle. Now, you know, throughout the Scripture, God compares us to many different things all throughout the Scriptures as the sands of the sea. Sometimes he describes us as sheep. Uh, Abraham said that we would be as multiplied as the stars in the heaven. Uh, Jesus uh, oftentimes described us as many different things. Uh, but you know what? I think it's very significant that when he does take the time to describe us as a particular animal or a tree or some sort of object that it does us well to dig into that why would the Lord say that we would mount up as wings like an eagle now I just before we get into the depths of this sermon I would like to give you if you would allow me just a little bit of discovery channel information about an eagle somebody say amen now, each one of these things about an eagle that we're going to learn today are going to be sermons all by themselves, but because it is 1115, if you're taking medicine, I won't take up all your time. Somebody say amen. Now, the first thing that I want you to know about an eagle is that eagles mate for life. <laughs> Somebody say amen. A bald eagle will find its mate and they mate for life. Well, glory to God. I mean, it didn't, uh, so far the sermon is going great, Mark. Amen. Stay on the guitar. <laughs> An eagle will find a mate and they will stay with that mate for life. How many of you know that we would, uh, it would do us well to learn a lesson from the eagle and find us a mate and stay with that mate for life? Somebody say amen. Number two, an eagle will find its nest way up in a mountain and they nest for life. They find a place and they stay there for life. Now, wouldn't it be good if church members, uh, uh, Sandra Payne, would find a uh, glory, uh, if they would find a church uh, and put their roots in that place uh, and nest for life? Uh, wouldn't it be good if people would say uh, that Cathedral of Life has been my church uh, for the whole nine years that Pastor Mike and Lorene Payne have been the pastors here? Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if the members would be as faithful as the pastors uh, could I get anybody to say amen? 
But unfortunately, we as members oftentimes get offended by every little thing. And we're like that sermon, Sandra T., that I preached a few months ago. We're tumbleweeds. We, we tumble around with every wind and doctrine. And I've been here long enough to know people who've been here and the people who hadn't been here. Somebody say amen. You know what, an eagle will not, you'll never see an eagle lighted down on a dead thing. Eagles do not eat dead things. They will not eat dead things. They refuse to eat dead things. You will never see eagles swarming around roadkill. You will never see an eagle landing on a possum that's been ran over by your Ford truck on the side of the road. And you'll never see that eagle sitting down there eating that thing. You'll see buzzards. You'll see blackbirds. You'll see all other types of animals that love them a little squished possum. But you won't see, amen, an eagle that will eat dead things. They will not eat dead dead things. I wonder if it would do us some good if we as believers would not eat a dead word. We need a word that is alive. Your dried up, doubly dead, plucked up by the roots words you got last year, you might need to get a fresh word so that you can do something good for God. Somebody say amen. An eagle's wingspan can be over up to seven to eight feet in length. In other words, that eagle has been created to fly. You've been created to fly. Somebody say amen. You've been created to fly. A eagle has extraordinary eyesight. In other words, their vision is beyond the norm. And how many of you know that the reason that some of you are in the mess that you're in right now is because of your lack of vision. You don't got vision. An eagle can be soaring miles above the earth and look down and see a little rabbit down the way and be able to zero in on that rabbit and swoop down and receive receive its prey because it's got good vision. Well, you know the Bible says in Proverbs that the people perish because they have a lack of vision. Look at your neighbor and say, you need better vision. Look at them and tell them, you need better vision. You need a better vision for your life. You need a better vision. It's because of the lack of vision. The only reason that people are not successful is not because of skill set. It's not because they didn't have enough people supporting them. It's not because of any other reason other than lack of vision. It is the lack of vision for an individual's life that causes them to live a mediocre life. If you cannot see yourself becoming something great for God then you will never see it and receive it but if you can see it and envision it you can walk in it somebody say amen now, see, you know, when you've got these birds uh, create these gigantic nests way up in a mountain in a cliff they get all kinds of things to create the nest. They get twigs and a string. They'll even find wire and bring it up into the mountain and they're going to create this wonderful nest. It's a nest that they build because they plan on Pastor Todd living there for life. Amen. They make it in a way that they can have it there for life. Now, a mother and a father eagle will have up to two or three little eaglets in a nice, comfy, down-ridden nest. These little eagles are living in the comfort of their little nest as they're hatched, and guess what? The parents don't feed their babies dead things. Oh. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. They, the, the, the parents of the baby eagles, Chris, does not feed their baby eagle dead things either. See, uh, Mama, uh, okay, uh, Daddy, amen. Uh, the reason that your little Johnny's tore up uh, is because you feed him dead word. Uh, okay, I know there's not going to be a lot of people going to amen me, but I preached a lot without amens, and I can keep doing it today. Glory to God. 
Amen. Because of the uh, your lack as a parent uh, on putting an emphasis on the only thing that is living, uh, and that, Michelle, uh, is the word of the Most High God. You want to know why Johnny's doing flips? You want to know why Sarah's dressing like a hoe? I can tell you why. It's because you have not given them the word of the living God, and you've let an iPad babysit them, and you have let the television and Hulu and Netflix run your house, and you need to start feeding your children the living and breathing word of the Lord. I wish somebody would shout right there. You want to know why Johnny's acting crazy and why your daughter's acting a fool and dressing like some kind of well glory? If it ain't for sale, then stop showing it. I'll give some people high fives up in this house right here. Come on now. Come on now. Somebody say amen. I said say amen. amen. Glory to God. Stop feeding their children dead things and they'll become alive come alive somebody say amen. amen glory to God and then they start getting bigger you know they start growing up and the little eaglet junior starts getting a little bit bigger and you know when that you know when the little eagle starts getting bigger Tyler it starts spreading its wings a little bit does any mama or daddy got any kids in the house that's trying to spread their wings a little bit? Amen. You know what I'm trying to talk about? They're spreading their wings a little bit because there's something with inside every little eagle that tells them even though the nest is comfortable, that's not where they belong. Even though the nest is comfortable, they know that that's not where they belong. So little Junior and his buddy and his brother, they start coming to the edge of the cliff. Woo-wee, that's a long drop. Okay. I'm going to do it. Have, have you ever stood? Uh, we grew up in Kentucky where they have strip mines. Y'all know what strip mines are? Where they dig up at the hole and they got all these big cliffs, Pastor Todd. And, and you get up there with your best friend or your brother like we would do. And you'd stand at the edge and you would always say, if you go, I go. Have you ever done that? And man, and you found out the longer you stand at the edge and look at what could be, the less likely you are to jump. Amen. And you're standing on the edge of that thing and you're looking and you're like, well, you know, hey, Junior, if you go, I'll go. And they're getting ready to jump, but they got a path all the way back. They say, okay, I'm going to sit back down in this nest. This is so comfortable over here because, you know, Mama's bringing us some fish. And Mama's bringing us a little rabbit and we're going to just stay here in the nest. But there's something in them because, see, guess what? Mom and Dad never show up at the nest except to feed the children. They don't live there. I said they don't live there. They spend the most of their life doing what they've been created to do, and that's to fly. Yeah. Junior comes back. He's like, oh, Mom and Daddy ain't here, and they over there flying around, and they come back to the edge of the nest, and they get there, and they're like, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll jump if you jump on the count of three. Have you ever counted the three and your friend pushed you on three? Friends like that, you don't need enemies. Somebody say amen. And they get ready to go. But see, there's something that's inside of all of us. When we're standing on the edge of our destiny, there's a little bit of fear because you've never done that before. You, you've never done that before. You've never flown before. You've never done it. See, when you're jumping off of a cliff and you've don't never done it before, you know the only result, if you don't figure it out, is death. So they go back to the comfort of their little therapeutic nest that their mom and dad created them with all the good comforts of home and life. See, the reason that many of you do not want to take a leap of faith is because you are definitely comfortable where you have remained your whole entire life. There's a level of comfort back here that you remain in even though you have a desire to stand and just take a leap of faith you remain because it's comfortable 
but don't you know that God knows better than you know? One day, little Junior is standing on the edge, looking about how he's going to fly, stretching his wings, thinking about how he's getting ready to do this thing, thinking about how he's about ready to fly, and Mama Eagle lands like a ninja behind Junior. <laughs> Junior is talking all this type of trash to his brother. One of these days, I'm going to fly out of this thing, and I'm going to be one bad eagle. I'm going to fly, and right when he gets ready to go, he's like, whoop. What Mama Eagle does, while they're over there flexing about what they could do, <clears throat> Mama Eagle is back here in the comfort of the nest, tearing that nest up. Throwing all the comfort, throwing all the rabbit hair out, throwing all the squirrel hair out, throwing up all of her feathers out of there where there's nothing left but a big old pile of sticks. Before Junior can turn around, she's out of town. He goes, hey, you know, I may try this tomorrow. Goes back to the nest to sit down and lo and behold, oh, what? <laughs> what is going on with this nest? See, you are busy rebuking the devil for all the uncomfortable things that are happening in your life but I've got to preach and tell you that the God of the eagles has tore up your nest why? so that you will never go back to that place of comfortability again because he knows if he doesn't mess up your life he knows if he doesn't mess your life up devil I rebuke you in the name of Jesus I, I command you Satan in the name of the and the devil's like look dude I didn't do nothing why are you rebuking me I didn't mess that nest up your heavenly father the good good father did that to you And the reason that the good, good father jacked up your nest is because he knows that if you continue to go back to comfort, you'll never do what you've been created to do and you'll spend your life on the edge of miracle without ever stepping out in faith. But you know what, Pastor Tyler, Minister Tyler, Psalmist Tyler, whatever, my friend Tyler, you know, some folks, though, Mark, they're so afraid of the cliff that they'll endure the pain of a nest that is no longer created for them. That's like most people. I thought I had a handkerchief somewhere. That's like most people in here. You will endure the pain of the thorns because you are afraid of the jump. Because what if, Chris, I take a leap of faith and my wings don't work? Ah! That'd be bad. That'd be just, just a little. Terrible. But how many of you already know I'm preaching to you? You're not shouting, but I'm talking to somebody in here today. They won't want to jump. They like this. They'll stay over here. In the, uh, uh, they'll stay over here instead of coming out to the edge. But you know what? I'm thanking God that we got a good God. Guess what? Mama shows back up. <sighs> While Junior, this is a fact. While Junior is on the edge, Sandra, of getting ready to talk about, man, I'm, I'm really getting ready to do this thing. I think I can do it. Mama's back here. like a little eagle ninja. And while Junior is up there thinking about flying, Mama's standing right here, and I can see the look on her face, and she knows that this is going to be a disaster, but she also knows that Junior wasn't created for the cliff. He was created for the air. And that mother eagle literally will push that baby out of the nest. Could you imagine?
wondering what is going on. And you know, if we could translate eagle, he'd be cussing his mama. Well, you know when it says you mount up on eagle's wings? What's that talking about? That's talking about the mother eagle. See, one thing you've got to understand when leaping out in faith, that our heavenly father can fly faster than you can fall. I'm here to tell you, you've been created for the air. You've been created to fly. You've been created to do something great. And even though you've never done it before, God is able to come down to where you are. The Bible says, the Bible actually speaks of this. The mother comes in, catches that eaglet in her wings, and flies him back to the cliff. But don't you know, something happens when you fly for the first time. Did you know that once Junior goes down that one time, that's all it took. He's over there about to have a heart attack looking at his mama like, you done lost your mind. But God knows that you can fly because that's what you've been created to do. And then that mom, the, 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 once you get a little taste of the Philippines, once you get a little taste of ministry, once you get a little taste of traveling, once you've done it for the first time on October 12th, when you take your team for the very first time, while other people have looked at you, Chris, and said, well, you've only been saved for five minutes. How are you going to have a ministry? But I've come here to preach and tell everybody, the Lord hasn't got time. Jesus is coming soon and very soon. We are going to see the King, and we don't have time for people to take off four years of their life and go to a cemetery school and get a bunch of pablum uh, and religiosity. Uh, God is looking for somebody to say these words. Uh, I've never flown before, uh, but the air looks good to me. I feel, hey, I feel like flying. Get into the mission. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel like flying. I feel like flying. Cause see, once you get a good taste of it, once you get a good taste of it, you're like, well, I don't know if anything is gonna work. And I know how Chris and he's probably like, well, I don't know if it's going to work. I, I don't know if anybody's even going to show up. I, I don't know if my wings are going to work when I go to start flapping them. But I've come here to preach and tell everybody that's got a vision. Everybody that's got a plan for your life. All you got to do is step out in faith. And I promise you the Holy Ghost will help you do the things you need to do. And even if you're by yourself, it ain't going to make a difference. Gonna be changed, souls are gonna be saved, people are gonna be filled with the Holy Ghost. Potential mayor, this is how we have church around here. I don't know what you do where you go, but this is how we have church at the Cathedral of Life. Hey, my, my. Glory, glory, glory. So once you get a taste for it, that's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because once you get a good taste of it, Mark, you'll never go back. You, you, you ain't ever going. You won't even know what in the world you're doing. Like, I don't know how this is going to work, but once you get out there, because see, guess what? Once Junior takes off that last time, once he takes off, he don't ever come back. Woo! Once we fly, we don't ever come back. I jumped off when I was 17 years old. I said I jumped the cliff when I was 17 years old. 
and said yes to God and yes to his will and yes to his way when I was 17 years old. Well, I'm not 17 no more. I'm about a good old round 46 and I've still got my wings out and still flying and still doing what the Lord said do. Glory to God. Still flying. Look at your neighbor and say, still flying. But look at your other neighbor and say, but before you fly. I said, look at him and say, but before you fly, you got to jump. I said, you got to jump. You feeling froggy? You got to jump. You got to jump. I said, you got to jump. You got to jump. You got to jump. If you're going to fly, you got to jump first. Or you can go the way of the eagle and get your butt pushed off. And I have found out, Pastor Mike Payne, that most folk end up having to get pushed. That's what I found out. Most folk got to get pushed. And you know one thing I've learned, uh, Tyler, that I like pushing people. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I got to tell you a story, if I can, about the man on the keyboard. I got to tell you about Tyler, who's sitting up there in a black vest and a black shirt and a black tie and black pants and some Jordans. Amen. Can you say, hey, hey, hey? Y'all get to see the eagle that flies. Y'all get to see the flying eagle. And isn't it nice to see a man with his wings out? I believe I can fly. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Amen, amen. I believe I can touch the sky. We'll get to that song in a minute. Somebody say amen. Every morning, every night and day. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. You didn't know you could feel the Holy Ghost singing that, did you? Well, you can. So Tyler joins up in the youth group at about 13 years old. Amen. <laughs> and uh, when I came along, he was in the court system at 13. Am I right about it? I think so, of course. Yeah. We're having meetings in my office with his parents, and I'm bringing a paddle about that long in there with me. Oh, you think I'm joking? To tell about it. I'm bringing a paddle in there, setting it down on the conference table, and like I'm about to use this on you, sir. And he was always this big, thirteen. I said, I'm about to beat you with this paddle right here, big man. Okay, a little scary, but I had to believe God. Somebody say glory. And Lord, and behold, he begins to play on the instruments, begins to play at youth and at lit, and we had about 150 young people in our youth group, uh, and we knew how to have church. Amen. I said we had about 150 in our youth group, and we knew how to have church. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and then things are going great. Okay, wonderful. Fast forward. He's still in the nest. Still in the nest, still in the nest, because the nest is comfortable, got mama, daddy, and got big Ron, which big Ron is exactly what you can imagine in your mind. He big, and his name is Ron, big Ron. <laughs> Hands about that big, he slap you with those, turn out the lights, the party's over. <laughs> okay, am I right about it? And so, um, I now have left to go into full-time ministry with Souls for Christ. I leave Baltimore, Maryland. I move myself to Atlanta, Georgia. Hallelujah. And then, after a few while, um, I call Tyler on the phone. I call this nest eagle on the phone. And I say, Tyler, and we didn't really hadn't been talking that much. And I call Tyler. I say, Tyler. Uh, what are you doing? I cut to the chase. Did I not? I didn't even be like, oh, praise the Lord. What you been up to in your life? Blah, 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 blah. No small talk. You'll find out with me. I'm very short on the small talk because all the small talk, Chris, I just don't really care. Go, Somebody say amen. You want to you want to call me on the phone, text me a bunch of small talk? Guess what? You're not going to get a response because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Somebody say glory. glory. These, these guys here are living the dream right here. All they're living it. The Pastor P dream right here. 
I said, what are you doing with your life? He goes, uh, I'm working at Sports Authority. Is that right? Or is it Dick's? Dick's. Dick's Sporting Goods. He goes, I'm working at Dick's Sporting Goods. And I say these exact words. Well, how's that working out for you? He goes, uh, I said, are you playing music full time? No. How much money did I say you saved for you? I said, look, dude, you need to quit Dick's Sporting Goods. Save $3,000. And in about three weeks, you need to move to Georgia. He's like, uh, I said, well, he goes, I'm going to pray about it. I said, stop doing that. You don't need to be praying about it. You need to be moving to Georgia immediately, if not sooner. I done told you, save $3,000 and get your hind parts out of that nest and move to Georgia. Amen. And guess what? He's like, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. He went and talked to his mom and daddy, and they looked at him and said, dude, you've got to be crazy. If you think you're going to move down to Georgia with that wild, red-headed preacher down there, you've got to be crazy. And he didn't get a whole lot of support until one day he told his uncle what the Lord was doing in his life, and he didn't have all the money that he needed to get down. He said, if I can get the money. See, sometimes you're going to tell God, if I can get that money, then I'll go. If you know the and the Lord said that's all I needed you to say I'll go the rest don't matter and the next thing you know his uncle wrote him a check for a thousand dollars and said you need to get down to Georgia well we had a plan that he was going to go work at Dick's Sporting Goods while he was down there in Georgia because you know there's a lot of Dick's Sporting Goods around so we go transfer him but guess what this young man since he jumped out of the nest has never worked another day at Dick's Sporting Goods and he plays the keyboard and the drums and the guitar full time doing what the Lord has called him to do hey because he got out of the nest he flapped his wings and said, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to fly, but I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. Oh, my, my, my. Man, if I'd give me and Tyler about five seconds, we could shout a little bit, but I got to keep on preaching. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I need to learn how to fly. Look at him and tell him, you got to learn how to fly. 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 Well, eagles spend most all of their life in the air. I said they spend most all of their life doing what the Lord created them to do. Almost all, the majority, Sandra T, of their life, Patty, they spent flying. Could you imagine doing in your life exactly what you've been created to do? You know, if you had the opportunity to quit your tore-up job, you know if you had another opportunity, you would do it so fast and make your boss's head spin off his shoulders. Because I would probably guess that the great majority of you here in this room aren't doing the very thing that you dreamt about when you were a child. Am I right about that? That's because you never left the cliff. You embraced the discomfort of the nest. Oh, Lord, that's good preaching for a white boy. I ain't going to lie to anybody. Hey, that's good preaching for a white boy. You've embraced the discomfort of the nest for a paycheck that doesn't even make you happy. Say amen. I'm preaching to everybody in here. But me, I, I, I got to tell you, Tyler, I, I, I wouldn't do anything else but what. If you came up with me with some other big old job and all this big old stuff, I'd be like, you can keep all that. I'm going to keep flying. I'm going to keep flying. But... But you know what, even though with the flyers, the eagles, every eagle goes through a serious situation, a life and death scenario. That the most majestic of all the birds, Chris, they go through a very serious scenario, it's life and death. Every bird, every church goes through this season. Every pastor goes through this season. Every professional flyer goes through this season. In the eagle world, it's called the molting process. It's called the molting process. 
that where that majestic bird who never takes the time to go into the valleys run, he finds himself with his beautiful wings and feathers falling out. That eagle will find himself down in a valley. Down there low. Flapping his wings with all of his might, but not able to get any lift. Not able to get no lift. Because those wings that used to carry him far above the atmosphere now have feathers that have fallen out now where there's nothing but a bone left. He used to fly. I can remember. I could use. And I used to could just do them wings two times and poof. Those talons that were so powerful that, the, that, that, that they will say that they could lift up a small deer and fly it into the nest. But now those talons, Lorraine, or calcium has covered the talons. Now where a once majestic bird now has been lowered down to nothing but a chicken. They say that the calcium will go over their eyes where a bird that can see miles into the future now can't even see to the end of its own beak. That, that massive beak that could crush a man's arm now can't even open. And one thing about it is that you'll never catch an eagle flying, uh, going, flying with other eagles. You usually see them alone. But now, Christopher, in that valley is full of eagles. These once majestic birds who would fly on their own, Brandon, now are all huddled up together. Going through a process that's going to kill them if they don't get right. They say that even those eagles will begin to peck at each other. Even those eagles will begin to peck at each other because see when you're not doing what you've been created to do you will peck at others because you aren't doing what you're supposed to do you'll start pecking at other people too they say that an eagle will Get down and find a rock. The ones, Pastor Todd, that will survive will find a rock. Yeah, they're going to find a rock. They find a specific rock, Gino, in that valley. The specific rock, Lorraine, they find is one that is in the sun. They'll find the one. Can't. Can't quite, quite get over it. You gotta find the sun. I said you gotta find the sun. And it'll crawl over to that area. And they say that the eagles that want to survive will find a rock and lay on it in the sun. And then what they'll do, they'll do something absolutely unbelievable. Because they know that if they cannot free their beak, they will not survive. They'll starve to death. See, the reason that many of you have trouble because you ain't eating. And they say that that eagle will get down on the sun, on that rock in the middle of the sun, and that eagle will begin to do something very unusual, that it will begin to bang its head against the rock. If you want to fly again, you're going to have to do something that may not look right. That eagle will begin to bang its calcium-filled beak against the rock. And they say that that eagle will scream all oh, every time it hits the rock. It lets out a horrible scream. 
He will bang his head on the rock. Because it knows, Michelle, if it can't free its mouth, it cannot survive. The reason some of you and to fly, but you can't, it's because your mouth isn't free. You can't eat. You can't praise. You can't receive the word of God. And you're banging your head against the rock. But see, they bang it up, they free their mouth. And then the Bible says, remember when David said, I look towards the hills from whence cometh my help. Do you remember that scripture? That he says, I look towards the hills from whence cometh my help. Uh, David is making a reference of, of the process of these eagles uh, who are down in this valley who are looking towards the hills. Amen. Because there's no food in the valley. I said there's no food in the valley. But they know they gotta release their beaks. And Pastor Todd, what they're waiting for is a sound. I said, what they're waiting for is a sound. And what is the sound they're waiting for? I'm glad you ask. They're waiting for a patriarch, an eagle, Pastor Mike, that has already been in the valley. An eagle, Pastor Mike, that has already survived. They're waiting for a man of God like you who has already been down in the valley. You know what it feels like to bang your head on a rock and wondering, are you able gonna be able to make it? But you had a sense that you looked towards the hills from which cometh your help. And when nobody thought you could fly, and when nobody thought you could do anything else, and when everybody thought you were all washed up, you said nine years ago, I've got the... You said nine years ago, I've got the faith to step out in something I've never done before. You had the faith to say, I think I can fly. I believe, I believe, I believe. He's already, he's already been where you've been. You're looking in that valley. You need a man who's already been there and came out. And, the, and they say that they're waiting to hear the screech of a patriarch they're waiting to hear the siren of an eagle that has already been in the valley. Now they say something interesting happens. That that patriarch eagle will go and get a fresh kill. A rabbit, a squirrel. And they will get a fresh kill. And that that eagle, see, see, see I gotta tell y'all, he don't land down there and drop there and say, hey, and feed you. No, because eagles already know how to eat. They say that the eagle will fly with screeches that can be hear, heard miles and miles away. Will fly over the valley, Sandra, and drop the word, the fresh food down for those that have prepared themselves by pressing their head against the rock. And it is those that receive the word from the man and woman of God will be the ones that will fly again, will be the ones that will mount up with wings as eagles, the ones that will run and not be weary, the ones that will walk and not be
That's what the word of the Lord is saying right now. Right now. That's what he's saying. We're not here to play. He didn't preach this whole entire sermon just so you could be cute. I wonder. Are there any, is there anybody in here today like Junior, like Junior? I got to slide over here because I got to look somebody in the eye. Anybody here like Junior on the edge of greatness, on the edge of something you've never done before? on the edge but your faith you're a little you're a little Simon just a little bit Chris you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about Cam you know know what I'm talking about is there anybody here that will say Pastor Pete I've been wanting to fly for a long time but I've been a little bit scared raise your hands Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Well, then stand up on your feet, everybody. Everybody, stand up on your feet. And I dare you to say, excuse me, while I stretch out my wing. what I want I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a, I don't know if I've ever done you always get nervous when I was like Pastor P says I'm going to do something I've never done before you're like oh my god I said that on Friday and we had about 50 men laid out like firewood down here okay Sister Lorraine Sister Lorraine I want you to come here come, come up here with me Hey, glory. Okay. Stand right here. Turn around. Pastor Payne, I want you to come over here, Pastor. Oh, yeah. Gonna mount up. Now, how many of you have felt like, and I know that the church, I feel like it's been in that valley a little bit as a church, just a little bit. But it's all right, though, because we're coming out. I said we're coming out. Amen. But here's why. It's usually because people feel like they're in a valley. How many of you in here have felt like you have been in a valley? But you feel like you've been in a valley. Raise your hands. A lot of us, huh? A lot of us. A lot of us. The Lord, the Lord, yeah. I know, I don't remember your name, but I... I know who you are. I know. I don't remember your name. I should, but it's all right. Cause you're famous. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> huh? Jeff. All right. Yeah, Jeff. You know what I'm talking about, right? On the edge of something that you can't hardly wrap your mind around, and you know that if you step off this thing, the Lord had better be with you because it's going to be a mess. What's your name? Stacy? Yeah, that's who we've been praying for? Okay. Amen. You feel the Holy Ghost right now, don't you, Stacy? I feel like you do. All right. We got Patriarch Eagles here. A man of God who's been in the valley and has came out. And look, he's looking pretty good. Amen. Looking pretty good. 
got the woman of God who has been in the valley and the devil thought he had her but God who is rich in mercy oh a woman of God who knows how to fly who knows how to fly so what I want to do those of you that raise your hand we're about ready to wrap it up I'm doing a really 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 good with the time right now I think hold up oh I'm good it's 1201 listen the Baptist they're at the restaurant right now <laughs> yeah the Baptist they're, they're there they're eating it right now cam they're eating the food now the Methodists they've already ate and left the Baptists are there now, okay? We're gonna be done. <laughs> oh, she just punched me. <clears throat> okay, well, praise the Lord, saints. Uh, we're gonna get there after they're done eating. We're gonna get to the restaurant with the fresh food. Somebody say amen. So it's 12.02. I want every woman that raised their hand that said, look, I've been in a valley and I want to fly. I want every woman that raised her hand and said, I've been in a valley, but I want to fly. I want you to stand here in front of Lorraine. Every woman, quickly, quickly move. Women, move. Women, move. Women, move. Hey, Bosh. Glory, glory, glory. Stacy, come on down here now. Every woman, come on over here. Holy Ghost. Every man that's been wanting to fly and feel like you've been in a valley, I need every man to come over here. Oh. Every man. Come on, every man. Okay, glory to God. My, my, my. Sandra Payne, come on up here and help us just holler this out. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do something. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. What's your name? The Lord's going to touch you, ain't he? That's what you're believing God for, huh? Glory to God. Huh? Oh, she said something. Glory to God. What's your name again? Send it. Praise the Lord. How many believe that God is a, is a healer? Amen. And a deliverer. Uh, if you don't believe it, look right here. We got one that's already been in the valley. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Now, how many women are that remains could say, you know what? I've been in a valley, but I've come out. Back in the valley. Come on. I need some prayer warriors. Amen. Trying to come out, but you... Yeah, y'all got some wings. You, you. Get some experience. How many men got some experience, some flight time? Amen. Some experience. Some experience, some flight time. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. What I'm going to do? I can't let there be a, that, this many more women over here than the men over here. Come and get over here. I need more men. More men, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Joseph, come on. Come on, Joe. Carlos, come on, man. Let's get up here. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Mount up, mount up. She's telling her girls what to do right here. <laughs> She's one step ahead. Mount up, mount up. Mount up while the wings of eagles Mount up, mount up Mount up while the wings of eagles Mount up, mount up Mount up while the wings of eagles Mount up, mount up Mount up while the wings of eagles Mount up, mount up
stay with me. Now, how many of you are ready to come out of this valley? Over here, men, how many of you are ready to come out of this valley? Amen. Now, what I'm going to have Pastor Mike do is I'm going to have Pastor Mike go in the midst and lay hands on these men. You with them? You got them? Pastor Todd, you ready to help? Because this guy has been in the valley and he's going to lay hands and lift you out. I'm going to have Sister Lorraine come down. Sandra T is going to help her. I'm going to have a time of ministry and that's all right right there. Okay. And we're going to see some women come about of the valley. Amen. I need a couple men. Uh, I need somebody to walk with Lorraine. Amen. Some men that's going to walk with Lorraine. Are you ready, Lorraine? All right, here we go. Mouth. 